kind of get started. So thanks again, everyone, for joining. Um, before we kind of go over um, a couple of demos from the community and uh, a little update on the landscape, is there anyone new on the call that would like to kind of introduce themselves and uh, say hi to the group before before we move on? Um, I'm here. This is Tammy from Gremlin. This is the first time I've been able to join. Um, I've been traveling a lot, so the time zones didn't work. But yeah, I'm in San Francisco right now. And yeah, great to be here. Um, and I do chaos engineering at Gremlin. And I also previously did chaos engineering at Dropbox, where I got a 10x reduction in incidents and no high severity incidents for 12 months. And before that, I did it at the National Australia Bank for like many years, <coughs> since really 2009. So yeah, great to be here. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Awesome. Great to bump into you again, Tammy. Uh, anyone, anyone else? Cool. All right. Uh, moving on. Uh, so on slide five, uh, so, uh, you know, we've been discussing this kind of landscape and kind of fighting over a little bit how to categorize the different tools out there. Um, you know, I, I was getting a little bit frustrated, so I just decided to basically start um, as simple as possible, right? So I went out, um, did a pull request to the Cloud Native Landscape and started with uh, four projects uh, that I could essentially find an SVG logo for uh, of high quality, uh, uh, you know, uh, base and uh, also kind of information on Crunchbase and so on. So different requirements that we have in the in the CNCF landscape. So um, I issued a PR. If there are other projects that you want to add, please let me know. Um, uh, I'm more than happy to kind of add them. I think we'll start with kind of a flat structure first. Uh, and then later on, we kind of go fight about how we want to subcategorize things because we had definitely um, a bit of difficulty kind of trying to figure out um, how to do that. So hopefully uh, people are okay with this approach in terms of starting simple and iterating, but look, kind of love to open it up to the feedback from the group before, before moving on. I guess silence is, uh, there's no disagreement. <laughs> I'll have a look after the meeting. Okay, yeah. No, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, I just started with four. Um, and we'll kind of go from there. Uh, eventually, once those are in the interactive landscape, we could distill kind of, uh, we have a design team that could kind of take that and break that apart into categories. But uh, I first kind of want to just collect the information out there. Um, I think simple is a good place to start. Cool. Yeah, I was getting a little bit frustrated after uh, just kind of working on things. I just needed to get something out there. So you kept iterating. Cool. Uh, so uh, yeah, but I'll continue to do that and give you an update in a couple of weeks uh, on that. But hopefully that should get merged in soon. Um, in terms of uh, community presentations, we have two things uh, today. One from Michael uh, to talk about fire drill and the other one from our uh, open. Cool. Thanks, Michael. All right, I think it's you next, Uma. So uh, feel free to steer once um, Michael stops sharing his screen. Perfect. All right. Thanks, uh, Chris. Uh, let me share the screen. Uh, can you see my screen? Yeah. Yep. All At right. least I can. Thank you. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think uh, Karthik and I are going to talk um, a little bit about um, quickly what Litmus is and uh, uh, we're still in the early stages. Um, Litmus is, uh, uh, we, we've been toiling uh, for some time on, you know, what to call Litmus. It's, it's, um, you can call it as a tool or our vision really says, uh, you know, get all the tools in the open source, the best tools, and then use them together. Uh, so we, we call it as actually a framework and uh, it's a framework for chaos engineering uh, right now for Kubernetes. Um, so tagline is uh, chaos engineering for stateful workloads on Kubernetes. Uh, stateful workloads really means that that's the kind of, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, tough area right now. Uh, all the problems will come the moment you bring in the stateful applications. 
and uh, the underlying uh, storage and networking um, will play a major role in the stability of a stateful workload. And um, at the moment, uh, it gives uh, a set of uh, E2E tests as uh, Ansible playbooks, and um, each litmus uh, test is uh, uh, <clears throat> a playbook that runs inside a container, right? And um, in today's demo, uh, we're going to uh, show how a litmus test looks like um, on GitHub, and also uh, introduce um, um, CAS into uh, MySQL app and see what Litmus uh, does, um, how Litmus helps in introducing CAS and seeing uh, whether the application works as expected or not. Primarily, Litmus is supposed to be used by developers and DevOps groups um, in their Kubernetes clusters, CICD pipelines, and uh, sometimes uh, before you put um, uh, things into production, for example, a new Kubernetes cluster being upgraded, how do you make sure um, this Kubernetes is going to work for your uh, DevOps teams, right? Um, so that's when, um, as a DevOps architect, you can put um, uh, certain litmus tests and run it in a pre-production pipeline and then observe, and then roll it out, right? Um, <clears throat> this uh, particular test um, has got uh, three configurable variables. Um, one is, uh, you know, how do you display the logs and uh, what kind of storage you want to do underneath and take underneath. And then, you know, what's the class type that, uh, that you want to uh, really apply. And uh, let me quickly show the anatomy of a test. Um, the project is hosted uh, as a sub repo and their open EBS organization. Um, uh, there are multiple tests here. Um, um, we are in the process of moving much of our uh, E2E tests onto uh, Litmus framework. Um, and, but right now, I think uh, we got uh, uh, a couple of sets of uh, tests that are moved onto Litmus already. Uh, to get actually started with Litmus, it's just a matter of uh, cloning the project. You get all the tests and then modify the tests according to, uh, according to your need. Um, and then really uh, just run the test uh, using the kubectl command, right? So every test will have a file called uh, run litmus test. Um, so that really uh, kickstarts the actual litmus test. Let me go and see show you, um, so for example, MySQL application or the Percon application, we got uh, two tests here. One is storage benchmark and the other one is uh, data persistence. And um, the test will really have the actual set of tests to be done and uh, run litmus YAML will have the configuration file on how to control your tests. And some of um, MySQL is really the application part. Um, if you if you see here, um, we are right now using the underlying storage as open EBS storage. Uh, you could perhaps use Rook or Portworks, um, which are following the Kubernetes uh, way of uh, attaching the persistent volumes to the pod. And uh, we are currently uh, uh, supporting for this particular test, um, three types of CAS. Uh, one is uh, through Pumba. Pumba itself, uh, I think we heard from Alexi last um, session that uh, Pumba is a CAS tool that can introduce two types of CAS. One is to introduce network latencies and the other one is to actually um, docker stop start type of a thing. So in this test, we are going to uh, kill um, an application pod using docker stop uh, through the Pumba APIs. And uh, this test also can be used to introduce different types of CAS. Um, you know, you can uh, use uh, Avict where uh, Kubernetes uh, taints will be set up by Litmus so that the pod gets evicted and then see, you know, what happens to the underlying application. Similarly, the node drain, that really means that um, it, the Litmus uh, job will go and kill uh, one of the nodes, right? Um, that's the kind of configuration parameters that we um, provide. Um, so just to give, uh, before we do a quick demo, uh, I want to 
take you through the setup that we have, also um, the demo uh, flow. And so we have a set of nodes, um, and uh, there is uh, uh, th this. This is a Kubernetes cluster on Google uh, Cloud GKE engine, and uh, we have a couple of nodes where there are GPDs configured as a data uh, source to these nodes, and we are expected to run um, uh, an application that uses this data. So what we do is we run a litmus job that does the following. Um, so it uh, launches a litmus pod, um, which does the real test. And uh, it launches the MySQL pod and makes sure that the underlying data connectivity is done through OpenEBS or whatever is configured as part of the test. And uh, then it launches uh, the CAS framework, uh, Pumba, and then it introduces CAS, right? And uh, MySQL pod will be watching for, um, you know, the test, uh, whether it's running fine or not. Um, the moment you introduce CAS, it gets killed and Kubernetes relaunches it, right? Um, so it's the uh, uh, same process can happen again and again. You keep introducing CAS, uh, you can configure how many times you want to do this. And after the end of uh, introduction of Kayas, um, you go and really verify the data, right? That's the fifth step that Litmus does. Uh, okay, the Kayas has been introduced, and now pod is scheduled somewhere. If it's not at all scheduled, then that's a failure. Even if it's scheduled, is it really connected to the data, and am I seeing the right tables underneath, right? Um, uh, and that's that's really what it is, and then it cleans up uh, one by one, and then you know all the latest part get, and then it gives you back the node uh, in the same state, the cluster. So the idea here is Litmus, with Litmus, the DevOps teams can really take from end to end uh, a given test uh, in an easy manner into the pipelines, right? Um, let me quickly go through this test. So I got, um, oops. So I'm on a, one of the Kubernetes nodes uh, on which uh, um, Litmus will run, and eventually the logs are going to be put into uh, the nodes. Currently, I will select it to publish the logs onto a local uh, node uh, in my Litmus test. So we are going to see the Litmus test results coming out here. Um, and uh, as part of the demo, I got um, um, three windows here to show. Uh, one is where I'll be watching uh, what are the pods in the Litmus namespace. And also I'll be observing the logs coming out of a uh, Litmus pod. And uh, then really this window I'm going to kickstart um, uh, the test. So let me just show the test again. Uh, I've taken <clears throat> OpenEBS as a class and actionable is just puts all the logs onto the STD out and guys type, I'm taking Pumba here. Um, so with that, um, uh, let me, So I'm running uh, this test and watching the Litmus namespace. It already started, and this is the container that it's creating. And uh, now I'm observing the logs on this window. As you can see, um, it's in the mode of, it already deployed the application uh, and it's, it's coming up and uh, you can see the open EBS volume controller and three replicas are already deployed. And uh, once uh, the MySQL Percon application comes up, um, then you will see uh, Pumba also getting launched and Kaya's being introduced. And then you can keep watching how Percona um, behaves. Uh, in the meantime, let me go and see if it started creating. Um, yes, it did create. 
So you will see uh, a test result.json file here when the test is completed. Um, so as you can see, the application is running uh, right now in a, the entire test we have configured it to finish in about two to three minutes. Um, and you can see that uh, there are some uh, test uh, data being written. Also, the Pumba is being launched, and that's the CAS tool being used for this particular test. And then the moment uh, Pumba comes up, it starts introducing the CAS, which is nothing but uh, kill this pod, um, the application pod, and then we expect that pod to come back up. Uh, <clears throat> So this um, this pod has gone um, into error state, and we are waiting for um, Kubernetes to reschedule it. It's rescheduled back, and again it's it's in that state, getting killed and coming back. Then once that's done, um, we have just for the benefit of uh, keeping the demo short, we put uh, less duration. Uh, for the CAS in a real test, uh, you would want to see um, sometimes Kubernetes puts the node um, port back onto the same node, right? So the idea would be the best practice in this case is, you know, introduce some um, same CAS 10 times and observe it um, going across multiple nodes and finally uh, see whether the data is persisted or not, right? Um, so it's coming back and um, here we'll, we'll be able to, um, so the Pumbaa is going down, that means the CAS introduction is done. And um, here, whether the data is persisted or not, uh, it would have uh, checked and uh, put that into a result file. This is a most primitive way of recording the result. Uh, as you can see that the test has really passed. Um, that's the kind of uh, introduction of CAS and verifying the data is already there or not. Um, one typical way uh, to do this is whatever we did, we could, we could have put this into a pipeline uh, and then you know uh, repeat as many times as you want. And um, uh, the Ansible jobs can be configured uh, automatically to alter the configuration parameters of the playbooks. So these tests are really written uh, to be used in a friendly way by uh, the DevOps uh, teams. So that's the quick demo. Uh, hopefully um, it made sense to you. <laughs> Any questions? Yeah, I've got one. <clears throat> do, do you feel like uh, since you've developed uh, Litmus, implemented and started using it, it has helped you thinking about open EBS uh, resiliency in general? I mean, has it, mm -hmm. have, have you changed your, your ways of approaching that in OpenEBS? Oh, yes. Um, in fact, Litmus is born out of um, OpenEBS, right? So we started writing um, um, this uh, E2E test, and then we started introducing CAS as part of the development of OpenEBS. And then we thought, uh, okay, you know, we are using multiple types of tools and we should all put together a project and um, you know even if we have a stable product out there uh, for the end users our end users while they put it into the production the applications they need to run, rerun the same test again right and that's when we thought um, uh, we'll open source it and then uh, make it as a more of a infrastructure uh, that puts everything together a framework that puts everything together yes so we are following all this inside open ebs all right yeah so uh, it's a community project again um as as uh, i was saying in the next uh, uh, few weeks to months um, more tests get moved um into the uh, litmus framework and um, 
we would like to see um, you know um, various application uh, developers or users getting um, their expertise into this test and then using this test uh, to their own needs or requirements yeah all right any other questions thank you cool <clears throat> thank you man karthik so uh not too many things to you know before we close out the meeting so uh just to you know if you go to slide 14 just calling out on essentially uh mainly the white paper uh you know there's been some discussion and iteration there so um, i encourage the group to continue to do that uh and of course the landscape um i have the initial pr out so um if you have another project you want to add there please do and kind of once we build that up we could um, have more discussions about breaking those apart into kind of subcategories uh, and quarter kind of wrap things up uh, gentle reminder on uh, slide 16 um, the first uh, chaos conference is happening in san francisco hosted by our friends at gremlin um, so we'll be there and it'll be great to have some folks uh, also show up there. We're also gonna be doing a chaos engineering track at KubeCon CloudNativeCon in Seattle in December. Um, the chaos engineering uh, working group will be entitled to essentially two talks uh, at KubeCon. So I'm gonna to try to figure out uh, how to best uh, divvy, that, divvy that up uh, with the group, but essentially, um, you know, I'm looking kind of for introductory content and maybe kind of an overview of the kind of different tools out there with demos, but uh, we don't have to figure that out right now, um, but uh, something to keep in mind. Um, other than that, uh, any other questions? Uh, I'm always seeking volunteers for community demos, so if someone wants to volunteer next time, please let me know, and our next meeting will be the second week uh, or second Tuesday of August at uh, 8 a.m. Pacific to be August 14th. Any questions, thoughts, volunteers for next time? If, if, if you, if, if nobody else, I'll try to come up with something with skills mm -hmm. with it. Um, we've got some, some cool stuff coming up, but I don't know if I'll be ready. <laughs> was, pressure pressure makes you. diamonds. <laughs> Yeah, so pressure makes diamonds. It'll be good. Deadlines are good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, and then I don't know if um, there was someone from Lyft too. I'd be kind of curious to see um, if Lyft would be willing to talk about some of the stuff they do, especially um, with Envoy has some of the baked in uh, ability to kind of do chaos testing. So yeah, that's me, Zach here. Um, okay. There's there's a couple of things that I could demo. I'm not I'm not sure what I need to who, who I need to talk to before doing these things, but Okay. Uh, there's a red line test that we that we run across all of our services. We kind of adjust the load balancing weights through Envoy Discovery Service. Yeah. Um, we also do fault injection uh, through Envoy. But yeah, I'll uh, I'll look into that. Yeah, know. no worries. I, I I know Pete Morelli well, so I, I'll just tell him to give you permission. It'll be all good. So. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, no okay. <laughs> cool. Yeah, no, it'll be good because not a lot of people know about those Envoy features. So it'd be good to kind of disseminate that a little bit more. Sounds good. All right, uh, any other questions? Otherwise we'll wrap it up and uh, you know, I'll uh, tentatively slot Sylvain and uh, Zach, depending uh, if they have content for next time on August 14th, okay? Okay. All right. Cool, uh, take care everyone and uh, I'll see you next uh, next time. Enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. Well, thank you very much, Chris. Right, cool. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Good one, good one, bye.